All right, the next lesson is called Adding and Subtracting Rational Expressions. Now, this is going to be a little more difficult than multiplying and dividing. Okay? So adding and subtracting rational expressions is similar to adding and subtracting fractions. To add or subtract rational expressions with like denominators, you simply add or subtract the numerators, and we keep the same denominator. Okay? So, for example, one-fifth plus three-fifths equals four-fifths. Same thing for subtraction. If you had to do six sevenths minus four sevenths, that equals two sevenths. Okay. But again, you need common denominators to add and subtract. Okay. So we're going to start off with some easy ones. We have two easy ones to start because they already have common denominators. Um, so example one, simplify. They already have the same denominator, so you just add or subtract the numerator. So the numerator is going to be x minus 3 plus x minus 2 over x plus 4. Okay, The denominator just stays x plus 4. For my numerator, combined like terms, 2x minus 5. over x plus 4. Now, going forward, I'm not going to ask you for restrictions, or at least not for this lesson anyway. Um, but just, just know that x cannot be negative 4. I'm not going to ask you to write them out anymore today, but this is um, just know that x cannot be negative 4. That's a restriction still. And this is simplified as much as possible. Example 2. Simplify. This one's subtraction, so you must distribute the negative sign. Uh, I'm going to jot that down and say, don't forget. Don't forget to distribute the negative sign or subtraction sign. So we are going to have the following. It's going to be 3x squared minus 5 minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 2. Because you have to distribute the negative sign, okay? The negative sign has to get distributed. In other words, you're changing the sign of everything, okay? So minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay. And the denominator is going to stay 3x minus 1. Uh, so now combine like terms in the numerator. You're going to get 3x squared minus 2x squared is 1x squared plus 3x minus 3. over 3x minus 1. Now if you want, you can um, you might be able to see if you can factor the numerator, so because maybe you can simplify this some more. So can you find two numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add to 3? No. So this is going to be the final answer. You, and you cannot just cross off the 3x without 3x. You can't do that, okay? This is the final answer. Now, that was the easy page, because that page, you already had common denominators, so that made it much easier, right? That's not going to be the case going forward in this lesson, so they're going to get much harder. To add or subtract rational expressions with different denominators, it is easiest to use the least common multiple of the denominators as a common denominator. So here are the steps we're going to follow. To find the least common multiple of the polynomials, factor each polynomial completely, write any repeated factors as powers, 
For example, x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x factors to become x times x plus 3 times x plus 3. And you can write that as x times x plus 3 squared. And then list the different factors. If the polynomials have common factors, use the highest power of each common factor. Okay. Um, I have this down here. But I'm just going to move on to the examples. I'm going to walk you through the examples and we'll see how we do this. Okay. So here's what I'm going to write down. Before we even try example three, notice how we don't have common denominators in example three and example four. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to factor first, then get a common denominator. Let's say factor first. Then get common denominators. Okay. So, example three, we are going to factor the bottom left, find two numbers that multiply to four, and add to five. So it'll be x plus four times x plus one when you factor that, plus the numerator is going to stay 5x. And over here, you're going to factor out a common factor of 3, which will leave you with x plus 1. So I'm not going to combine any steps. If you were doing this on your own, you might want to combine some steps. But I'm going to find the least common multiple of the denominators. So I'm just going to recopy this step right here for now. Again, if you were doing this on your own on a test of quiz, you might just combine these steps. I'm going to write each thing separately so you can see it as I do it. Okay. I'm going to leave that for now. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to get a common denominator. So in order to do that, I'm going to find the least common multiple of the denominators. Okay. Both denominators have an x plus 1. That's great. Okay. This denominator has a 3. This denominator does not have a 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3. This denominator has an x plus 1. I mean, it has an x plus 4. This denominator does not have an x plus 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by x plus 4 over x plus 4. And that's going to give me the following in the next step. Okay. So give me three over three times x plus four times x plus one. Plus my numerator is going to be five x times x plus four, which we'll take care of in a minute. My denominator is going to be exactly the same as this denominator because look, 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1. See, because of what I did above in blue, now I have the common denominators that I need. Okay, So again, I'm not going to skip any steps, but my numerator is 3 plus... 5x times x plus 4. Or 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1. Now, generally speaking, um, you can leave your denominator like that. Um, I'm going to multiply the numerator out and get that in standard form. So I'll have 3 plus 5x squared. plus 20x after I distribute. I'm going to leave the denominator like this because that's normally how these answers are left. 
And I like to put the numerator in standard form, so 5x squared plus 20x plus 3. Over 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 1. You cannot factor the numerator anymore because you cannot find any factors that multiply to 15 and add to 20. So since I cannot factor it anymore, I'm just going to leave it like that. The denominator can stay like this. That's okay. You don't have to actually multiply those out. You can leave it like that. Okay. Example four, let's start by factoring. So the top left is going to stay as one. The bottom left, you're going to factor out the greatest common factor of three. So it'll leave you with x squared plus 7x plus 10. Plus 4x over, you're going to factor out a common factor of 3. And it'll leave you with x plus 5. The only thing better than factoring once is factoring twice. So you can factor the bottom left again. Find two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 7. It'll be x plus 5 times x plus 2. So now, in order to add them, we have to get a common denominator. Okay? So again, I don't want to skip any steps. I'm just going to recopy this again, but you might want to just combine these if you were doing this on your own. I recopy everything. That way I don't combine steps because this can be confusing. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I do not have the common denominator yet. Let's make let's get the common denominator. Okay. Both denominators have a three. That's great. That's good. Both denominators have an x plus five. That's great. But this denominator has an x plus 2. This one does not. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 2 over x plus 2. You always do it over itself because that means you're multiplying by 1 and that's fine. When you multiply by 1, you don't actually change anything. So that's why you're allowed to do that. Okay. So again, you multiply by x plus 2 over x plus 2. Just like in number one or number three, we did x plus four over x plus four to get a common denominator. And over here, we did three over three to get a common denominator. Okay, so here you go. The equation on the left, or I mean the, or the term on the left, is, is one over three times x plus five times x plus two. And my other term is going to be 4x times x plus 2 over 3 times x plus 5 times x plus 2. Again, I'm trying not to skip any steps. I'm doing everything separately. Now we're going to write that as 1 because we have a common denominator now, so we can write it as 1. One term. My numerator is 1 plus 4x times x plus 2. My denominator is 3 times x plus 5 times x plus 2. Let's distribute in the numerator. 1 plus 4x squared plus 8x. I like to put the numerator in standard form so it looks nicer. 4x squared plus 8x plus 1. The denominator can stay like this. Let's see if we can factor the numerator some more. Can you find two numbers that multiply to 4 
and add to eight? No, so this is the final answer. Okay. Two more. Okay, here we go. Example five. We're going to start by factoring. So factoring the bottom left that has a GCF of five. So factor out the GCF of five. It leaves you with x squared minus 25. The bottom right has a GCF of 3, so factor out the GCF of 3. It'll leave you with x plus 5. Now you're going to factor the bottom left again because you have a difference of two squares. So 7x over 5 times x plus 5 times x minus 5. A squared minus B squared equals A plus B times A minus B. And minus 4. Okay, so I'm just going to recopy that step again because I don't want to combine any steps. I want to make this as neat as possible. I don't want to combine anything. Okay, so there's a 5 there, and there's a 3 there. So what I'm going to do is, since there's no 3 in this term, in this denominator, I'm going to multiply by 3 over 3, like the following. And since there's no 5 in this denominator, I'm going to multiply this one by 5 over 5. But there's more, okay? Both denominators have an x plus 5, so that's great. This denominator has an x minus 5. This one does not. So I'm also going to multiply by x minus 5. Doing that will give me a common denominator now. So I have 21x, 3 times 7x is 21x, over... 3 times 5 is 15, times x plus 5, times x minus 5. And the other denominator is going to be exactly the same thing, but that was the whole point of that step above. 15 times x plus 5, times x minus 5. And my numerator right there is going to be 20, 4 times 5 is 20, times x minus 5. Again, I'm not going to combine any steps, so I'll just, I'll just uh, in the next step, I'm just going to write 21x minus 20 times x minus 5 over 15 times x plus 5 times x minus 5. Distribute 21x minus 20x plus 100. Negative 20 times negative 5 is positive 100. And that's over 15 times x plus 5 times x minus 5. And then combine like terms, and that's the answer. x plus 100 over 15 times x plus 5 times x minus 5. Okay, one more. Example six. We'll start by factoring. The bottom left has a GCF of three. Take out the three, it leaves you with x squared minus three x plus two. Okay, now the numerator in the top right is going to be fine as is. 
But you're going to factor the GCF from the bottom right, and the GCF is 3. So I'll leave you with x squared plus x minus 2. Now we're going to factor again because we can factor again here and here. So x over 3 times what two numbers multiply to 2 and add to negative 3? Be minus 2 and minus 1. Negative 2 and negative 1. And now you're going to find two numbers and multiply negative 2 and add to 1. So it'll be x plus 2 times x minus 1. And now we need to get a common denominator. So I'm just going to recopy this step down below to, so it looks neater. Don't want to do too much at once. So, both denominators have a 3. That's great. Both denominators, denominators have an x minus 1, so that's great. This denominator has an x minus 2. This one has an x plus 2. So since this one does not have an x plus 2, I'm going to multiply by x plus 2 over x plus 2. And the other one, I'm going to multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2. Okay. So now my, my first term is going to be x times x plus 2. Over 3 times x plus 2. Times x minus 2. Times x minus 1. I'm going to subtract 2x plus 1 times x minus 2. Over the same denominator. That was the whole point. All right, let's make it 1 now. So it's a little neater. x times x plus 2 minus 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 over 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. Now, the denominator is going to stay like that. You have to simplify the numerator, though, and see if you can factor. So for the numerator... You can have x squared plus 2x when you distribute. Minus 2x times x is 2x squared. I'm going to combine a couple of steps right now. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. And plus 1x will be minus 3x. Then 1 times negative 2 will be minus 2. Now, you have to be careful because you're, dis you're subtracting, so you're going to distribute the negative sign. So, in the next step, x squared plus 2x minus 2x squared plus 3x plus 2 because you're essentially distributing the negative sign. Same denominator that we've been doing the entire time. Now you're going to just combine like terms and see if you can factor any more. So when you combine like terms in the numerator, you get the following. You get negative x squared. You get plus 5x. And you get plus 2. over 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. 
And that's the end. You cannot simplify the numerator anymore. There's nothing else to divide out and simplify. You can leave the denominator like that. And that's the final answer. So as you can see, it's not easy to add or subtract rational expressions when you don't have a common denominator. But that is how you, you simplify those problems.